May I request permission of the Honourable the Chief Justice to commence the proceedings. The authorization issued by the Honourable Governor. Arif Muhammad Khan, Governor of Kerala, Raj Bhavan, Tiruvannathapuram, 695-099. Order dated 23rd February 2021. By virtue of the provisions of Article 219 of the Constitution of India, I, Arif Muhammad Khan, the Governor of Kerala, do hereby appoint Sri Justice S. Manikumar, Chief Justice High Court of Kerala, to administer the oath or affirmation in the form set out for the purpose in the third schedule of the Constitution of India to Sri Murali Purushottaman, Sri Siyad Rahman Alavakat Abdul Rahman, Sri Karinagaran Babu, Dr. Kausar Edapagat, appointed as additional judges in the High Court of Kerala before they enter upon their respective offices. Signed, Arif Muhammad Khan. Now, may I request Sri Murali Purushottaman, the judges designate, to occupy the seat beside Honorable Chief Justice to take the oath of office. The Warrant of Appointment of Sri Murali Purushottam. By virtue of the power vested in me, by Clause 1 of Article 224 of the Constitution of India, I, Ramnath Kovind, President of India, do hereby appoint Sri Murali Purushottaman to be an additional judge of the Kerala High Court for a period of two years with effect from the date he assumes charge of his office. Given at Rashtrapati Bhavan, New Delhi, this 20th day of February in the year 2021, first Falguna 1942 Saga, in the 72nd year of the Republic of India, signed President of India. May I request the Honorable Chief Justice to administer the oath of office to Sri Murali Purushottaman. I, I, Murali Purushottaman, Having been appointed additional judge of the High Court of Kerala. Having been appointed additional judge of the High Court of Kerala. Do swear in the name of God. Do swear in the name of God. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established. That I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India. That I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment perform the duties of my office without fear or favor, affection or ill will perform the duties of my office without fear or favor, affection or ill will and that I will uphold the constitution and the laws that I will uphold the constitution and the laws Thank you, my Lord, the Chief Justice and Honorable Mr. Justice Murali Purushottaman. May I request Sri Siyad Rahman Alevakat Abdul Rahman to occupy the seat beside Honorable Chief Justice to take the oath of office. The Warrant of Appointment of Sri Siyad Rahman Alevakat Abdul Rahman. By virtue of the power vested in me, 
by clause 1 of Article 224 of the Constitution of India, I, Ramnath Kovind, President of India, do hereby appoint Sri Siyad Rahman Alavakat Abdul Rahiman to be an additional judge of the Kerala High Court for a period of two years with effect from the date he assumes charge of his office. Given at Rashtrapati Bhavan, New Delhi, this 20th day of February in the year 2021, first Falguna 1942 Saga, in the 72nd year of the Republic of India, signed President of India. May I request the Honorable Chief Justice to administer the oath of office to Sri Siyad Rahman Alavakat Abdul Rahman. I, I, Siyad Rahman Elavakat Abdul Rahman, having been appointed additional judge of the High Court of Kerala, having been appointed additional judge of the High Court of Kerala, do swear in the name of God, do swear in the name of God, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established, that I, I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment. That I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment. Perform the duties of my office without fear or favor, affection or ill will. Perform the duties of my office without fear or favor, affection or ill will. And that I will uphold the constitution and the laws. And that I will uphold the constitution and the laws. Thank you, my Lord, the Chief Justice and Honorable Mr. Justice Siyad Rahman Elavakat Abdul Rahiman. May I request Sri Karinagar and Babu to occupy the seat beside Honorable Chief Justice to take the oath of office. The warrant of appointment of Sri Karinagar and Babu. By virtue of the power vested in me, by clause 1 of Article 224 of the Constitution of India, I, Ramnath Kovind, President of India, do hereby appoint Sri Karinagaran Babu to be an additional judge of the Kerala High Court for a period of two years with effect from the date he assumes charge of his office. Given at Rashtrapati Bhavan, New Delhi, this 20th day of February in the year 2021, first Falguna 1942 Saga in the 72nd year of the Republic of India, signed President of India. May I request the Honorable Chief Justice to administer the oath of office to Sri Karinagaran Babu. I, I, Karinagaran Babu, having been appointed additional judge of the High Court of Kerala, having been appointed additional judge of the High Court of Kerala, do swear in the name of God, do swear in the name of God, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment, that I will duly and faithfully to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment. Perform the duties of my office without fear or favor, affection or ill will. Perform the duties of my office without fear or favor. And that, I will, and that I will uphold the constitution and the laws. And that I will uphold the constitution and the laws.
Thank you, my Lord, the Chief Justice and Honorable Mr. Justice Karunagarin Babu. May I request Dr. Kausar Edapagat to occupy the seat beside Honorable Chief Justice to take the oath of office. The Warrant of Appointment of Dr. Kausar Edapagat. By virtue of the power vested in me, by Clause 1 of Article 224 of the Constitution of India, I, Ramnath Kovind, President of India, do hereby appoint Dr. Kausar Edapagat to be an additional judge of the Kerala High Court for a period of two years with effect from the date he assumes charge of his office. Given at Rashtrapati Bhavan, New Delhi, this 20th day of February in the year 2021, first Palguna 1942 saga in the 72nd year of the Republic of India. Signed, President of India. May I request Honorable the Chief Justice to administer the oath of office to Dr. Kausar Edapagat. I, I, Dr. Kausar Edapagat, having been appointed additional judge of the High Court of Kerala, having been appointed additional judge of the High Court of Kerala, do swear in the name of God, do swear in the name of God that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the constitution of law as by law established. That I will bear truth, faith and allegiance to the constitution of India as by law established. That I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India. That I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India. That I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment. That I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment. Lord, the Chief Justice and Honorable Dr. Justice Hauser Kedapagat. Now, may I request Lieutenant Additional Advocate General Sri Renji Tampai to offer the ceremonial welcome speech. Honorable Chief Justice, Mr. Justice Sri Manikumar, the newly sworn Honorable Judges, Honorable Judges of this Court, Honorable Justice Siki Akkabedi, former Judge of this Court, Mr. Thomas Ekram, President Kerala High Court Advocates Association, Registrars of the High Court, the State and Central Government, the Officers, Senior Advocates, Staff of the High Court of Kerala, Staff of the Educational Office, Members of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association, Members of the Kerala High Court Advocates Club Association, Family Members of the newly sworn in judges, Ladies and Gentlemen. Four more honorable men are sworn in as judges of this honorable court. All men of character, true record, and eminent lawyers. Mr. Justice Murali Prashantaman and Mr. Justice Sai Rahman were advocates practicing in this court. Mr. Justice K. Babu and Mr. Justice Kausar Pedapakat have distinguished themselves as eminent judges of subordinate judiciary. Kerala High Court is one of the best high courts in, the, in, the, in our country both in relation to the number of cases being disposed of and also in relation to the quality of judges delivered. The Honorable Judges of this Court led by the Honorable Chief Justice lead the judiciary in the state in a quick, efficient, honest, fair and justice dispensation system in our state. True freedom requires rule of law with judges and the judicial system in which the right of some of some are not secured by delay of the suppression of rights of others. 
India as a sovereign socialist democratic secular republic is governed by the principles of rule of law. The concept of rule of law is that the state is governed not by the ruler or the nominated representatives of the people, but by the law. The bedrock of our democracy is the rule of law. That means that we have an independent we have to have an independent judi judiciary, judges who can make decisions independent of political wins that are going. This is a time when our system of governance in general and the justice dispensation system in particular is facing unparalleled challenges both from inside and outside. This is a time when the cardinal and basic principles of our political state is a <coughs> put to extreme test. The principles of sovereignty, social state, secular credentials, democratic values of our republic are being challenged from all sides. Even eminent former judges of the higher judiciary make statements that the Indian judiciary is ramshackled. I am sure that our country and the constitution are strong enough to overcome the challenges facing our country. In the words of the eminent jurist Charles Evan Hughes, we, I am quoting, we are, we, under a constitution, we are under a constitution, and what constitution is, is what the judges say it is. And the judiciary is a, is a safeguard of our property and our liberty and our property under the constitution. We all know the newly formed judges very well. This is very important has 28 years of practice as advocate of this own court and is an authority in election laws as well as other laws including property societies, constitutional law, service law, etc. He has written and published law books on election laws. He was a standing counsel for several and state election commissions as well as a government leader for a short period from 2001. I have long association with, with uh, Mrs. Murli Purushottam starting from our college days at government, Dr. Jandavala. I had a number of occasions to interact with him as a lawyer and is greatly impressed by his in-depth knowledge in law as well as sound common sense. Mr. Justice Sai Rahman was practicing in this court for the past 22 years and has appeared in large number of cases. His expertise in constitutional law, electricity laws, laws in the practice of motor vehicles, insurance, labor is worth mentioning. This is Justice K. Babu joined judicial service in 2009 as district judge and served in various capacities at different levels as judicial officer. At the time of elevation, he was a principal district judge at Trivandrum and was also the chairman of the ethnicity committee of Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple as constituted by John Supremo. Mr. Justice Kausar Kadapadat joined a judicial service as a district judge in 2009 and served the supported judiciary in various capacities. At the time of his elevation, he was a state transport public tribunal and principal district judge Arnaud. He had ordered the book Diverse and Gender Equality in Muslim Personal Law in India, which has won great appreciation from legal circles. We are fully aware that all of you are persons with proven ability. All of you are perfectly equipped to disturb the honest duty of the judge of this august institution with determination and resolve is all. I am the the learned individual, law officers of the state and civil government, assure all of you our wholehearted cooperation and wish all of you distinguished career of the, as judges of the High Court of Kerala. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Now let me invite Kenneth President Kerala High Court Advocates Association, Sri Thomas Abraham, to welcome and felicitate the newly elevated honorable judges. Honorable Chief Justice. Other honorable judges, the four duly sworn judges, honorable Mr. Justice Mubli Kushwaman, honorable Mr. Justice A.S.R. Rahman, honorable Mr. Justice K. Babu, and honorable Justice Dr. Kausal Edipagat, family members of the duly sworn judges, Sri T.C.K. Abdul Rahim, former judges of this honorable court, and each judge general. Mr. Jitabai and uh, additional educator Mr. K.K. Vidra, director of prosecution Mr. C. Sri Karnaya, S. V. South Chairman Mr. P. Jagoma, State Attorney Mr. T. Sohan, Mr. Joseph John, Chairman of Bar Council of Canada, 
the Sushanush law becomes a racial and the constitution. The senior standing of the tax systems to be gay, the leader of the NO, plus the credible members of the fraternity, the A-star general, and other officers of the school, educators, and the effects. <coughs> Determining the parameters for selection of taxes is a matter widely discussed in our country on every occasion of serious debate on the strength and fields of democracy. The established stage of the course as one of the three pedestals on which our democratic system rests depends doubtlessly on its credibility, which in turn depends strongly on a speculative procedure in the matter of selection of judges. It is this concern which has been worrying not only the Buddha's religious fraternity, but the nation, entire nation itself. What should be the criteria for selecting agents? We all know that there is no state-tacking formula for determining the essential qualities for such selection. But a search through the oldest of the authorities took me to Socrates and Cartier, the latter an often quoted ancient Indian jurist. Socrates is stated to have defined the qualities of the judge in explicit terms. Four things belong to the judge. Quote, Four things belong to the text. To hear courteously, to answer wisely, to criticize soberly, and to decide impartially. Unquote. Katyana's thoughts in this area are more interesting as he classifies the qualities on the seven heads Akukha, meaning do your will, Madhura, meaning politeness, Sitha, meaning dispassionate, Shamajudo, meaning forgiveness. Vijakshara meaning educated, having an ideal mind. Usabana meaning spirited and hardworking. And Dhrloha meaning without brain. I am not using any of these yardsticks to assess the qualities of the newly, four newly sown in honorable judges. Not because the four set talks have turned absolute owing to the serious talks, but because all the four honorable judges were with us in these cold rooms, leaving us no space to doubt their virtues. While writing this speech, I quoted over the best compliment I could use as my first sentence while referring to his lordship honorable distinguished his middle picture. An embodiment of humility was the calling of words that struck me in the first instance. I admit that I found no reason to substitute that with any other word, as every step, every move, every word of his dear lordship is embedded with the noblest of virtues, humility. When I met his lordship yesterday, while he made a courtesy visit to the bar association office with the other judges, he made a reference for his practice, and set me a note to, I would have completed 30 years of practice on the 9th day of March 2021. I saw, a, I saw a spark in his eyes when his thoughts mentioned about his practice, the way his boundless love for the human touch. One soul who beats with delight is an old teacher, Mrs. Vimada Bhavarish, who recollected an old instance of a sixth standard student writing a composition on my ambition, revealing his dream for his future as becoming a lawyer. It is that student who has now gone much beyond his dreams and has become a judge. The petition of the details regarding the linkage to career and the rich professional practice in various branches of law is not done to save the valuable time of this August assembly. However, the academic contribution, contribution of his lordship as the author of books on election law has to be essentially mentioned, failing which this speech, speech will not be complete. His lordship spent was his family consisting of his wife, Nina Bernadi, and his son, Gogul, who is a network engineer in Facebook, California, USA. The old heart, which throbs with happiness, sky high, is that of our Robert Senior Counsel, VNS Rupert, his lordship's father. Senior advocates, you, Mr. M. Madhubar Menon, guided his lordship through his days of infancy in the profession. For a long period, in this honorable court, election commission was, had only one face. Late advocate K.K. Shalif was one of my best friends 
and is affluent being affluent being said, often grooming his office in Pulisi Nikanal Road in the evenings. One day, I happened to see a new face and so he returns to me. He brings a new, uh, he brings a young lawyer. That is my first meeting with Honorable Mrs. Justice A.S.E. Adhanam. The warm smile on his face, I saw on that day, never faded. Yesterday, when his lordship came to the Bar Association, we exchanged present weeks. The aspect that touched me most was that only one name was mentioned by his lordship. That was the name of his senior, A.C. A.K. Mishra. One may forget the tracks threatened by him and the hands that led him in darkness when he is ruled by and only for the good-hearted person can we expect reminiscences of gratitude that I saw in his lordship's eyes and that too after about two decades. His lordship was an authority in city insurance, mobility and banking jobs and his erudition in these fields will be of immense aid for his honor to and as a part of that the bar has well. His lordship's elevation to the bench is no doubt in the recognition of his impeccable character, integrity, and deep knowledge of law. Honorable Mr. Justice K. Bahadur left this honorable court after a short spell of service in January 2018, leaving warm memories in the minds of all the lawyers who interacted with him during his tenure. I can now see this as I was a president of the Kerala High Court. Educates Association in 2017 when the instruction served as a division minister. That is a period during which the differences between the press and the lawyers created virtual havoc. Every person at the helm of the administration of this school had really hard days, and it was in, the, in this turmoil that his lordship, Honorable Justice K. Babu, had played a key role in maintaining harmony and healthy relationship between the bar and the legislature. All my experiences about our short meetings comes to my mind, but I refrain from narrating the details for want of time. His lordship is a native of Devadu near Kotaragara. He is the son of the late K. Karanagaran and K. Bhavan. He enrolled as an advocate in 1994. After 15 years of active practice, he entered judicial service in 2009 as a district and session service. A loss indeed for the bar and again for the bench. He has served as a special judge, CBI, Registrar Subordinate to the Judiciary by Court of Kerala, Registrar Officer on Special Duty, Supreme of India, and Chairman, Administrative Committee, Sri Patnavas of the Temple. Before his appointment as a judge of this Honorable Court, he, his lordship was serving as a principal district judge, given Personally, I am happy that Honorable Justice Dr. Kausar Pinpadu will not be there in the side of the deciding of this course below in the next year's badminton competition. His Lordship's leadership talents made him organize a team of brilliant players from the northern end of the southern end of the state to defeat two of our young judges in whom persons like me repose much confidence considering him as the best badminton player. This happened a week before the last, week before the last. Next time, this lordship's organizational guidance can be utilized for us in retaliation. Not only in the field of sports, but in various other areas where this honorable group requires talent and need in evidence to overcome the present day problems emanating from the pandemic, that this that this lordship will be a, a real asset. Now, another eminent son of Tarsim Bar has reached, this, reached the bench of this honor. His lordship graduated in law from Calcutta University and did post post post-admission in law from LG University and was awarded doctorate from Indian Law Institute in 2002, his lordship shifted his practice from Tanshiri to this honor and in 2009 uh, entered the judicial service at the city and session state. Just before his appointment as judge of his honorable court, his lordship of serving as a principal district judge, a matter the activities of the legal service authority play a crucial role in extending the fruits of the system for dispensation of justice to a large section of our population. Progressive outlook and keen interest in the uplift and welfare of the 
downloaded as a new business option to fulfill the role as a chairman of the district legal services office rather than the comp. Whenever a new judge is appointed, he or she is considered an asset to the entire district, vested with the noble duty to safeguard the high expectations. Here also, all the four honorable judges are this nation's asset. The whole nation expects a lot from you. We, the bar, also sincerely hope that during your tenure, you will only give as moments of moments to feel proud of you as members of this noble fraternity. On behalf of the entire bar, I convey with warmth our boundless affection in regards to the new judges. We convey with you and offer you unstinted support in our joint pursuit for excellence. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now it's time for the newly sworn in Honorable Judges for the reply speech. First of all, let me invite Honorable Mr. Justice Murali Pulshottaman for the reply speech. Esteemed brother and sister judges, additional advocate general, assistant solicitor of the Rule of India, president of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association, the president of Kerala Women Lawyers Federation, director general of prosecution, state attorney, judicial officers of the state, senior advocates, members of the legal fraternity, former judges of the High Court, advocate clerks, officers and staff members of the High Court. All those who are watching this function online, ladies and gentlemen, I thank the additional delegate general, Mr. Ranjit Tamban, and the president of the High Court Bar Association, Mr. Thomas Erdogan, for the nice words spoken of me. I thank Almighty God for having chosen me to adorn this august office. I express my deep gratitude to the Collegium of this Honorable Court, comprising of President Chief Justice, Honorable Mr. Justice Gritius Roy, Honorable Mr. Justice C.K. Abdul Rahim, and Honorable Mr. Justice C.T. Devi Kumar and the Collegium of the Honorable Supreme Court for having reposed confidence in me and inviting me to the bench. It was my mother's dream to become a lawyer. However, she could not pursue her studies after her marriage and it was her wish that her son fulfills her unfinished desire to be a lawyer. She is here to witness this ceremony. I lost my father when I was doing my second year of the five-year LLB course at the Government Law College at Macro. I am sure that today he will be gladly witnessing this function and blessing me from his heavenly abode. After my father's demise, some of the elders, elder members of my extended family advised me to take up a job under the Dining Harness Scheme after the BAL degree that would be conferred on the completion of the third year of the five-year LLB course. However, my mother and both my sisters, Sheila and Lakshmi, compelled me to pursue my studies in law and my elder sister, who was then doing her studies abroad, supported the family with the scholarship she was getting. After I graduated in law, it was senior counsel late barrister MPR Nair who introduced me to Sri N. Nandagumara Menon. I had been a junior to senior counsel Sri N. Nandagumara Menon for almost a decade and at his chambers I had the opportunity to handle cases dealing in a variety of subjects. He has been my mentor and guiding force, guiding light. I also fondly remember with utmost gratitude and reverence all my teachers and professors who have been instrumental in holding me in good stead in my life, in, in my later life. My wife has been of great support to me throughout my career. In the, in the busy schedule for survival in the profession, I regret that I could not spend much quality time with my son and could not even attend many of his open houses at school. By the time I could spend time at home, he had to move on from home for his studies. In the present situation of pandemic, he is not in a position to be physically present here to witness this function, but he is watching the live streaming of this function. My wife's parents, Senior Consul V. N. Achyudakur and Srimadhi Sarva Devi have been towering pillars of support in my life and I am deeply indebted to them. I am advised not to pay encomiums to my friends at the bench and friends and relatives at the bar, so I have restrained myself. I am proud that 
I was part of this illustrious war. I have delivered the pains of a first generation lawyer and I am well aware of the occupational hazards, the stress and strains of the loyal community. I hope God will give me the courage and wisdom to follow the path of rectitude and righteousness and assure, and I assure you I will discharge my duties to the best of my ability and acknowledge and the best of my ability and knowledge and in accordance with oath which I have just taken. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Lord Shri. Let me invite Honorable Mr. Justice C. R. Rahman Alavakad Abdul Rahman to deliver the reply. Honorable Chief Justice, Honorable Brother and Sister Judges, Distinguished Honorable Former Judges of this Court, Additional Advocate General, President of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association, President of the Senior Advocates Association, President of the Kerala Women Lawyers Association, Director General of Prosecution, Assistant Solicitor General of India, Law Officers of the Centre and State, Members of the Legal Faculty, Ladies and Gentlemen. As you are aware, this is one of the best moments in my life. I am delighted that I am vested with the duties and responsibilities as a judge of this Temple of Justice. Firstly, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to the former Chief Justice of the Honorable Court and presently the Judge of Honorable Supreme Court Justice Rishikesh Roy, Honorable Justice C.K. Abdul Rahim, and Honorable Justice C.P. Ravidma, who have reposed confidence in me by recommending my name. Looking back to my journey so far, several faces are coming to my mind who have helped me to achieve this. I realize that all those persons came to my life according to the will and grace of our God. I realize that this is not an achievement of my own. It is a sum total of the contribution made by those persons and I am thankful for that. It was my late father, Advocate A. A. Abdullah Man, who led me into this profession even though I was little reluctant. The law degree course was his choice and later I realized that this is the only subject which I can handle with confidence. Even after entry into my profession, he provided me all his support, including the financial support for a long time, which enabled me to survive in the profession during my initial days. Unfortunately for me, he is not with us today, but I can imagine the delightful smile on his face as he is watching this moment from heavenly God. My mother, Srimadhi Latifa, is with me here. I am incredibly happy about that. She provided support throughout my life, and she is the most dependable person in my life. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to late advocate M. V. Brayoti, who held my hand while I entered into the profession as an apprentice. I also love to remember the roles of senior advocates Sri K. P. Dadabani and Sri Sumadhi Dadabani in shaping my career during the initial days before this honorable role. I am also grateful to late advocate J.G. Eaton, with whom I spent four years of my practice before the subordinate courts in Ernakulam, and I feel that my trial court practice during those days formed the basis of my career. I feel that the real turning point in my legal career was joining with advocate K.K. Shurek, who is not with us now, as he passed away in the year 2016. I still remember a rainy day in June 2002 when I met him in his office with a request to join his lawyer firm, Mrs. Sharif Associate. I mentioned it as a turning point in my life because that was a time in which I was little confused about my career due to the initial struggles of existence in profession. And in fact, I was seriously thinking about leaving the profession to find out some other avocations. I believe it was the mercy of God which worked through my colleague, Advocate Larke Joseph, who called me just a day before asking me to share it, sir. Lal was already a part of that office. After the day I met, I met my beloved senior, the thought of leaving the profession never came to my mind. It was he who recognized me, recognized a lawyer in me and perhaps a judge also, and gave all the encouragement encouragements to move on in my profession. During the days of practice with him, I also got the opportunity to work with Advocate P.M. Kujimudhi Kuti IPS, Advocate T.K. Sehdali Kuti and Advocate A.K. Muhammad Ali former district judge. The experience which I could attain from them was unmeasurable. 
On this occasion, I also wish to mention the role of my partner in prof profession, Advocate Lalke Joseph, who always stood beside me since I joined him in the year 2002. He is the most precious gift from God and I believe he is the best partner in profession one can dream of. We shared our profession, happiness, sorrow, success, failure and finances too for the past two decades. His wife, Raymond, who is handling the administration of our office, was always a supporting hand. And even in difficult situations, I am glad that she is also here to witness this moment. I also wish to thank my colleagues, particularly Advocate Lexi TA, Advocate Murli Dhan, Sudesh Subhmar, Advocate Kwaya Alpha Maraj and Shadas Bhava, and staff of my office in providing support to me in my career. On this occasion, I fondly remember, remember the role of my teachers, Professor Ahmad, Professor A.B. Shetty, Professor G. Santosh Kumar Shetty, Advocate Devi Kiran Devi Kiran Mudeshar, Advocate Shyamla Bandari, and Advocate P. Balakrishna Shetty, who taught me various subjects of law while I was studying at YMS Law College, Kundabara, which is a small town in South Karnataka. I am extremely fortunate that the Kannadiga friends which I got during my days there are keeping the relationships alive even after 25 years. My wife, Sijina, my daughters, Isa and Dia are my strength. I do not wish to thank them, but instead I thank God for making them part of my life. My sisters, Sina, Sijina, their husband, Advocate Iyer Rafi, and Sudhik Nasi. Mother-in-law Kanima and brother-in-law Ajit were always with me on all difficult times. I also remember my father-in-law, Ko Abu who was my inspiration until he passed away in the year 2002 in a tragic road accident. Apart from the above, there are several other persons who have inspired and helped me in achieving this. I also wish to express my gratitude to the members of the bar, particularly those with whom I used to have discussions debates and reference about all subjects on earth, on earth, including law, while sitting in a small room in our Advocates of Association premises. I believe those discussions and debates provided a clear idea about the genuine concerns of the lawyer community and also of the clients they are representing. I believe that it will help me now in discharging my duties. I know that I have so many limitations and I have to work really hard to move on with my responsibilities. Whatever I could achieve so far are not my point, but it is the collective contribution of my family, society and members of the world. I am very well aware of the responsibilities ahead and I am committed to carry out this. I pray to God to make me strong, to serve my country by discharging the duties effectively. I believe by grace of God and the and with the support of the bar, I can carry out my duties effectively with the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Shri. Now over to Honorable Mr. Justice Karunagarin Babu for the reply speech. President of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association, Sh. Thomas Sedera, Chairman of the Bar Council of Kerala, Senior Advocates, and the members of the Bar, Registrars, and other officers of the High Court, ladies and gentlemen. This is an extremely proud and blissful moment in my life. I thank the God Almighty for His mercy and kindness. I accept this office with great humility and profound gratitude to very me. Today, as I assume this esteemed office with the heavenly blessings of my late parents, Shri K. Bhavani and Sri K. Kirunaga, I can feel and perceive their blessings and good wishes. I sincerely thank my mentors, Advocate Sri N. Vishnathan and late Advocate Sri K. Ramachandran for carefully leading me to this noble profession 
and for showering on me their fatherly affection. I am privileged that my elder brother Sri K. Murugeshi, who with his sense of idealism, devotion to duty and dedication has been a living inspiration for me, is present at this function. My wife Srimadhi Santya and my children Brinda and Varun, who share my happiness today, have always been supportive. My parent Baba, the Kotarakara Baba is another great teacher to me. Each and every member of my parent Baba is remembered today with due regard for the contributions they made to my men. Coming to my genuineness and distributes, the first and foremost luminous image that flashes through my mind is Honorable Mr. Justice Totatya Vira Harshman, the Chief Justice of Calcutta High Court, whom I treat as my guru. I also cannot ask you to forget on this occasion Honorable Mr. Justice P.R. Ramachandra Nenon, the Chief Justice of Chattisgarh High Court, who showered love and affection upon me. I am grateful to Honorable Mr. Justice Rishike Shaw, the then Chief Justice, and other members of the Collegium, Honorable Mr. Justice C.T. Ravikumar and Honorable Mr. Justice C.K. Abdul Rahim, who recommended my name to this high office. In my career, I have been blessed with the warmest affection and love from Honorable Mr. Justice S.A. Bogde, the Honorable, the Chief, Honorable Chief Justice of India, Honorable Mr. Justice Renjan Gogoi, former Chief Justice of India, Honorable Mr. Justice Ashok Bhushan, Honorable Mr. Justice Mohan M. Shantanagoda, Honorable Mr. Justice K. M. Joseph, Judges of the Honorable Supreme Court, Honorable Mr. Justice Navinity Prasad Singh, Honorable Mr. Justice Anthony Dominic, former Chief Justice, and Honorable Mr. Justice R. Basan. I do also acknowledge my indebtedness to Mr. Justice A. Mohammed Mushtaq, who always paid me like his brother. I belong to the support in the judiciary, the prestige of which is very high at the national level. I had the opportunity to perceive the working of the judicial institution at the grassroots level, as also the problems of the support in the judiciary. I consider myself fortunate that I have had the invaluable experience at the grassroots level that may help me to better discharge the responsibility which I undertook today. I am indebted to my colleagues of the support in the judiciary members of the bar, the advocate clerks, and the court staff whose wholehearted cooperation had made it possible for me to discharge my duties. I acknowledge my sincere gratitude to all my teachers, elders, relatives, friends, and all who have worked with me during my time in the subordinate judiciary for their encouragement, wishes, and prayers. I had the rare privilege of saving at the feet of Lord Ayapa and Lord Sri Patmanabha Swami during my career. I certainly believe that the God Almighty in the form of Lord Ayapa and Lord Sri Patmanabha Swami have always protected and shielded. As, as I stand here today, I am very conscious of the constitutional responsibility entrusted with me by this apartment. I am fully conscious of my limitations also. I am fully aware of the enormous respect, trust and faith which the society places on the judicial institutions. The society considers the judiciary as the ultimate guardian of their rights and liberties. In fact, this faith is our strength. It has to be maintained at all courts. In all humility, I hope that I will be able to do all I can to dispense justice to one and all without fear or fear. I request all important cooperation from the power. I conclude by praying to the Almighty to give me the strength and courage to uphold truth and justice. Jai Hind. Thank you, Lord Shri. Now it is a tale of Honorable Dr. Justice House of Edapagat to deliver the reply speech. is now a part of the very core of my being. 
words cannot express how tremendously honored and privileged i feel to be especially for the presence of everyone who has taken the time to be here thank you all i thank the collegium of this high court consisting of former chief judge sri rishikesh roy brother judge justice c k abdul rahim and justice c t ravi kumar the collegium of the supreme court as well as the government for their respective roles in the nomination recommendation vetting and appointment i also acknowledge the support rendered by justice p r ramachandra manon presently the chief justice of chhattisgarh high court i would like to thank the additional advocate general and the president of the kerala high courts advocate association for the warm welcome and i appreciate the words of support you have conveyed today many kind words have been said about me i feel they are too kind listening to them i have a sense that compliments are premature as in this the most important role i'll be called upon to serve in my career it is or ahead of me my path to law was not a chosen one no one in my extended family had ever been a lawyer a career in the law among others was not something that i imagined for myself after completing the pre degree i heard of others applying to law school but didn't dream of applying myself until my late brother sri orchard ahmed whatever been a tower of support and strength to me all my life persuaded my father to join me to the newly introduced fiver llb course though i was the first in my family to pursue a career in the law i certainly was not the first to be interested in the law my late uncle sri siddhi kadapagat had a fascination with the law he is the person who put the foundation of my learning character showing me the joy of intellectual pursuit since i was a child after graduation giving a set his dream to pursue the law he had to fly to the gulf to support his sisters by the time he returned from gulf he was overjoyed to join law course thus he desperately what desperately wanted one of his nephews to pursue law as a career both my uncle and brother are no longer with us they would have been proud of this achievement and elated with today's appointment i can feel their blessings and kindness kindness falling on me from their family abroad the, the education that my brothers and sisters and i had was due to my father's self sacrifice and good judgment he brought us up to understand that education was paramount he working no less than two jobs at a time to ensure that we had everything we needed set an example of hard work he provided me with the means to enjoy a liberal education one of the greatest gifts any parent can bestow my brother is the one who sincerely my mother is the one who sincerely raised me with her caring and gentle love i am so fortunate and grateful that my parents are both able to be here today with all humility and humbleness i consider it as my privilege to pay my sincere tribute to my guru my beloved senior advocate p mustafa a true gentleman lawyer known equally for his professional competence and also for his admirable values the principles values and nobility inculcated by him in me have influenced not only my professional life but personal life as well i was never treated as a junior in his office but was like a part of his family respected sir i bow before you for all that you have done to me my wife and children have been my constant companions with me on this journey to where i am today i am truly blessed their love and affection are the foundations on which my life stands indeed whatever modest success i have had in my professional and personal life is on account of the loving understanding and gentle and unobtrusive emotional support i received from my wife she has sacrificed much including her career as a journalist for a while to give me the ideal home for a judge i have taken too much of a time my children fill me with love and pride they follow me through like through life like a greek chorus pointing out all my faults and follies my siblings always encouraged me constantly and was an inspiration teaching me my by example to place my trust in hard work perseverance and determination and grateful that my parents in law and my brother in law are also here to mark this occasion and i thank them for the assistance and support they have provided over the years as i look around i see many people who in various ways have contributed meaningfully to my life and career but one stands out that is justice a mohammad mustaq he mentored me when i was a law student and a lawyer and a judge he helped a lot in shaping my career and life 
the formation of the law firm MK Associates was a turning point in the professional life of both of us. He is a lifelong and most valued friend. It is God's destiny that we have been assigned to share the bench today. I am truly delighted and feel honored. On an occasion such as this, it is perhaps an opportunity to acknowledge, acknowledge one's four base in the profession and in particular the law firm that had the greatest influence on my career. The professional support given by my erstwhile partners, Advocate M.J. Mila Hama and Advocate M.K. Sumo, and the close personal relationship I still maintain with them are priceless. I am grateful to my former colleague in chamber, Advocate P. Abdul Rohoff. I have had a wonderful time at the bar. I bow before the bar of Kanur and Tavishiri, where I was groomed and trained. Though more than 11 years have been elapsed since I left the bar, I do even today carry with me cherished memories of my happy days there. I love the camaraderie there at the bar and people in it. I mention in particular Advocate C. Krishnan, a great M. Karnagaran Nambia, great lawyers of Kandur Bar, who inspired, encouraged and championed me a lot. An occasion such as this makes both a beginning and an end. In embracing this new challenge, I want to say how I have some mixed feelings about now being here. I will miss the district court, a jurisdiction that I love. I work. It was a great court to work in. As a district judge, I enjoyed the work thoroughly throughout. I will miss my colleagues and court staff in the judiciary there. I am grateful for their support, their friendship and their collegiality over 11 years. I hope in my time that I have, there I have kept calm and acted fairly as I also intend to do in this court. Of course, there is always much more to be done. I express my gratitude to the bar at Randall Gordon Court at Nambalam, where I served as a district judge. The whole pattern operation of the Mingawa Soto Bar and the advocates' clerks had made it easy possible for me to enjoy my tenure during this period. I acknowledge that contribution with gratitude. I am indebted to those members of the bench who encouraged me a lot during my formative years in the legal profession. I mention in particular C. V. Baskaran, now the State Election Commissioner, before whom I started practice while he was working as Munsip at Kanu. I acknowledge with gratitude the support and constant encouragement extended by Justice Thomas T. Joseph and Justice A. Hari Prasad while they were serving as district judges of Tavishiri. I do remember Justice R. Basan, who in my early professional life set standards of judicial bearing and efficiency and fairness. I have strong friendship dating back to school years, most of whom are not involved in the law. My friendship with them is all the more important to me. They keep me grounded, they keep me inspired. I think of my galaxy of teachers of the schools and colleges where I study. I thank them particularly for the value system which they had attempted to inculcate in their students like me. My tutor, Sri O. Abuti, who taught me English language, deserves special mention. I acknowledge with gratitude immense, with gratitude immense, the blessings of my extended family, of my closest relatives and well wishers. A well functioning, respected system of justice is the wellspring of a strong and free and democratic society. This is a part of great importance to the nation. I come to this office at a time when our judicial institutions are subject to intense scrutiny. Public confidence in the judicial system depends ultimately on the judges' continuing loyalty to their oath of office. As I stand here, I feel the weight of responsibility of the role I am sworn to perform. I work very hard to achieve that goal. Only time will tell how effective I will be. I pray Almighty to bestow, to bestow on me the courage and conviction to carry on a noble tradition and high standard for which this great institution is recognized. Thank you all for joining this important ceremony. Jai Hind. Thank you, Lordship. The ceremony is complete. May I thank Honorable the Chief Justice and all the Honorable Judges of this school, especially the newly elevated judges, their family members, former judges, special invitees, lawyers, clerks and staff who attended this function physically as well as through virtual mode. Once again, congratulations and best wishes to all the four honorable judges who have shown in today. Thank you, Jayhind.